Julian, who has been waiting for two hours to talk to us. Julian, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Oh, good. I just, hey, man. I just wanted to, to say thank you. You guys helped me. Uh, I was a theist for a long time. And uh, Talk Heathen and uh, the Atheist Experience helped me deconvert, basically. Hey! hey glad to hear it. Woo! Good on you. Nice. <laughs> what did you want to talk about? Well, I've been an atheist now openly for about two years. Um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of still in that angry atheist phase. Sure. Sure. But uh, I don't think that, it, I don't know, I'm starting to think that this might not be a phase for me. This might just be how it is. Be, um, mm -hmm. I've been openly gay since 2003. And because of the way I was treated by Christians, most specifically, because that was my community, uh, I don't really think that there's a way out of this now, like that the angry atheist thing is unfortunately going to just be stuck with me now. Mm. Well, that's fair to say. And it's worth pointing out that there's a lot to be angry about. You know, we talked at the very beginning of the show about how there's really no value in denying that anger. You know, how you operate with it, what you choose to do with that anger is a very important question, but you don't owe it to anybody to not be mad. And there's a lot to be mad about. So it, it's valid to acknowledge and identify those emotions. Maybe tell us a, a little bit about what you're struggling with or what that anger means to you. That's a great idea. Um, well, I guess what I've tried to kind of funnel it into now is I've recently got involved with the satanic temple so i've been trying to find more helpful ways to kind of use this to maybe combat religion in a way but not mm -hmm. obviously in a violent channel that emotion yeah but, yeah yeah, yeah I'll, I'll say this okay. summer as we were watching our our world burn in a lot of ways the pandemic was dragging on in a way that we weren't understanding there were violent protests over the death of george floyd and all of these different things and I remember just sitting with a, a friend, first time I'd seen anybody in months at the time, and just talking about like, well, what do we do with these emotions? And for me, a big part of my answer was, well, every Thursday night at seven o'clock, uh, I do <laughs> secular sexuality and I put some effort and energy into trying to make the world a better place. And that does do a lot for me to manage and channel that anger and to make it into something that's uh, a little bit more empowering and a little bit less corrosive. So th there is a lot of value in that. I didn't mean to keep interrupting you, though. Please, please go on. Uh, well, that's that's pretty much about it. I just I don't really yeah. feel that I can get over this. This is kind of how it is now. The damage is done. You but know, I would feel it's unreasonable to mm -hmm. drop so, so, so. it because it's it's wouldn't be. So Julian, Authentic. Julian, yes, your healing process is going to take as long as it's going to take. And if you expect it's going to maybe be done in a day, a year, five years, 10 years, your healing process is yours and it's valid. And mm -hmm. as long as that's going to take, that is absolutely fine. Um, Christy, the way you were talking about uh, about channeling that that anger, that frustration, I do the same with that in my anxiety. I call it weaponizing my anxiety. I, sure. you know, I, I focus in on a task. Julian, one of the one of the things that really helped me specifically with anger was volunteering for the hotline project. Because interesting. Well, yeah, because when you you know they, they they train you up as a you know a peer support kind of person you know you learn to listen and talk to people and you get lots of calls from people who are in heartbreaking situations people who just need somebody to talk to mm -hmm. and it can be a great place to refind your heart you know, and, and, and to, to find a, a good way of kind of working on that. Um, I, I honestly, I would highly suggest volunteering for the hotline project for recovering from religion. If anybody's watching, who's feeling this as well, um, call up the hotline project, tell them talk heathen sent you <laughs> and, um, 
You know, we recently did an episode with uh, Nate Smith, one of the moderators at Recovering from Religion on secular sexuality. Uh, he spoke uh, really beautifully about a lot of that work and what it looks like. So it's if it's something you're curious in, that may be uh, a way to explore it. But certainly you can reach out to them directly. But more personally and, and practically and logistically, I guess I'll just say to you, as a therapist who works hugely with uh, folks who are recovering from religious trauma or folks who are coming from the ex-evangelical movement or from the atheist community, I have to say that two years is not a long time. It's a long time while you're in it, but it is not an indication of what the rest of your life is going to be like. And while you may feel a little bit stuck in this moment, it doesn't mean that you're broken. There are tons of really great resources for how to heal from uh, religious trauma. Uh, I myself do a lot of that work. A lot of great therapists do work centered around that. And I have even led a, uh, a process group utilizing a book called uh, Leaving the Fold by Marlene Winnell. And I'd like to recommend that to you in particular as perhaps a place to get your, uh, your journey started if you are looking to, uh, to get a little unstuck here. Hmm. I think that would be a, a wonderful idea, actually. Uh, and and doing just, something is basically. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. Finish your thought, please. Doing something that would kind of more or less oppose Christianity in a way that would be helpful to others would be very much in line with the Satanic Temple. So that does very much so interest me. Awesome. Uh, great. Awesome. Good work. If you can get it, uh, get involved. Definitely. Hey, Julian, thank you for waiting for so long on the line. Um, and just just so you know, dude, I lurked for eight years before reaching out to any kind of atheist community. I spent eight years listening to podcasts and reading books. I spent eight years before I was comfortable to even step foot into a place. And when I stepped foot into the ACA, I broke down crying because I was like, I'm home. But it can take a long time. <laughs> don't, 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 yeah. And goddamn, Christy, you're getting. I, I want to do the sound effect. I'm sorry, but I, I, I love it that you are not broken. Oh no, the sound no, effect didn't work. I just oh. feel I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> oh. Sure, and we all do. Uh, the good the news is people. you don't need to worry about whether or not you've completed that work because you're never going to complete it. Uh, you're never going to end up because ending up's not real. But, you know, we can get better because we're not dead yet. So until we are, I'm going to keep on working to try and make myself and the world around me a, a better place. And it sounds like that's the journey you're on, too. So good on you. <laughs> Take care, brother. Sounds like you Thank got you, an sir. awesome journey in front of you. Take care. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You too. Bye.